Hello and welcome back to a video that I have been really, really excited to make. This is going to be the grand finale workshop showcase for Scream Fortress 2023. Now I've got a ton of amazing items that I'm really excited to show off here. So many in fact that I really don't have time to do a long intro. So we're going to be jumping right in here with the smoking gun, which is going to be this really nice all class hat. Now, what's really interesting about this is it has three different styles, but it doesn't change the hat at all. The paint region is always going to be the same. What changes is what the class is smoking. So you can have a cigarette, a pipe or a cigar. Now, that's something that I thought was really interesting because a lot of classes have like a bunch of cigar cosmetics or they have a bunch of pipe cosmetics. I know there are a lot of instances where certain classes don't have access to certain things. Having something like this in an all class hat with all of these options, it's really going to open up some different loadout combinations. And that is something that I really love to see, dude. I mean, this is this is the perfect quintessential all class hat. It's going to be useful on all of the classes. It's going to look good on all of the classes. While certain classes might get more use out of it, I think it's going to be really useful for all nine classes. And that's what I look for in an all class hat. Like, does it bring value to every single class it's on? In my opinion, this one knocks it out of the park, man. I would love to see this one as like a mercenary grade in the next case. I think this is just, this is the definitive all class mercenary grade hat like it just it doesn't get much better than this man and imagine getting this with like the smoking unusual effect or steaming or burning flame something like that like that would look awesome man we're starting out here with an absolute bang i really like this hat dude i could gush about this thing for ages but i have a lot more items to get into now we're going to be getting into a war paint that i have been really excited to show off this is the man-made war paint and it is a hundred percent scout time I made. I really wanted to try out a war paint that was based around Spy's default color palette. So you obviously have his suit, his balaclava, and his glove. All of these colors are directly sampled from the actual model textures. So it's going to be super accurate in game. And I am just, I am in love with how this came out, man. Especially on the holy mackerel. Just, just a little fish in a suit, man. I, I love it so much. This is definitely one of my favorite war paints that I have worked on. I spent a lot of time on this one and it's an idea that I have had for a very, very long time. It's something that honestly, I'm surprised we don't already have in the game because even though this would obviously work really well on Spy, there are a lot of cosmetics for other classes that use this kind of pinstripe pattern. So there is going to be a lot of use cases for this. It does have custom wear as well, where it's going to wear to this kind of black charred burned suit kind of texture. Nothing super crazy there. I didn't want to go overboard with it, but in game, this thing looks awesome. I have a very subtle amount of albedo tinting on there to kind of mimic how Spy's suit behaves in the light. I really could talk about this thing all day, man. I am so proud of how this one came out and I hope you all like it as much as I do. Next up here, we have the Dominator, which is is going to be a cosmetic set for the soldier and the heavy. We're going to kick things off here with the hair cosmetic, which is the killer cut. This is obviously going to be inspired by the Terminator, but reference aside, this is a really awesome looking cosmetic. You get the hair and you do get the sunglasses. Lots of combo potential for something like this. And I love the modeling of the hair here. Like it looks really good, man. And I think it's fitting for TF2. That is a really hard thing to juggle, man. There are some cosmetics in game for hair that just they just don't look right man <laughs> they just do not you it's a lot of the older ones i've noticed but something like this i feel like it's gonna fit right in but the main thing i really like here the different styles man look at the styles you got the minimal wear the field tested the battle scarred and the factory noose you have glasses you got glasses with like the torn up face you got no glasses and like kind of a bloody tear right there. And then just the hair, no glasses, no tear, nothing like that. This is going to give the cosmetic even more versatility. Like you're going to be able to do a lot with this thing, man. And this is the kind of item that I would be so excited to make some loadouts with because the range is going to be just, it's going to be so vast, man. It's going to be really fun to play around with. 
The paint region is going to paint the hair, which is a perfect paint region, exactly what I would want out of this. But we're not done because we also have the synthetic fibers. This is obviously going to be the body cosmetic, again, for both the soldier and the heavy. And this looks absolutely good gorgeous man i love the color that they chose here it's distinct from like the normal team colored shirt the loadout potential for this thing i mean for any body cosmetic the loadout potential is really exciting because when you get a new body cosmetic for your favorite class like it just opens so many different new loadouts and it's fun to mess with every update I think Soldier especially is going to get a lot of use out of this thing because Soldier has a lot of really good body cosmetics, but I don't think he has anything that can quite fill this niche. Heavy has a couple leather jackets already, like a couple biker jackets and things like that. Still going to be really useful for Heavy, but I think Soldier is really going to get a lot of benefit here. Like some of these loadouts, man, they just look really good in my opinion. Overall, this is a really solid set, a great example of how to make a good reference cosmetic set because obviously you get the reference you you get it's the terminator but at the same time it works really well on its own and it's not overbearing in my opinion which i think is really important for a reference cosmetic this one came out really nice now we're going to be getting into the better half for the engineer giving him this really awesome cyborg getup. you got this mask this eyepiece this glove even a little bit of the arm right there now engineer is the perfect class to receive something like this because he has so many different robo cosmetics machine themed cosmetics the combo potential for this thing is gonna be immense and even better there is a second style that removes this like head eyepiece thing so it just leaves the mask and then like the arm pieces i'm assuming that's so you can use different gloves different hats i think it would help it use the tin 1000 actually now that i think about it it's probably specifically so that it can be paired with the tin 1000 which is going to be an absolutely banger combo dude look at that thing I really like this one, dude. I think it's got amazing loadout potential. Engineer just has so many different items that can pair with this. The Wavefinder looks absolutely sick, actually. Like that with like the Iron Lung, the Gunslinger, that is gonna look amazing, dude. And now the paint region is going to paint the eye. Normally, I would prefer it to paint the metal instead of the eye, but I think this paint region works here. I think it's better than having it paint this massive chunk of metal. That might be a little too much, you know what I mean? But overall, I mean, this is a fantastic engineer cosmetic. I think it's really suited for Halloween. I could easily see this one being like an assassin grade or something in the next case. That is going to bring us to the Zephaniah's Ghost Unusual Effects. Now this one, I just really liked the sprite work, man. I love these little ghost sprites. It's nice and simple. It's not over the top, but I think it's very fitting for Scream Fortress and the color variants are pretty nice as well. Though I think mainly people are gonna be interested in the purple variant here. Looks really nice. I like the particles trailing off of them. I like these more subtle Scream Fortress effects. You know, not, not every single unusual effect has to be huge, loud particles emitting from your head. Like it's just, it's nice to have something a little different every once in a while, you know what I mean? I'm a big fan of this one, dude. It's kind of simple, but I dig it. I dig it. Now we are in for an absolute treat, dude. This is one that I've been really excited to talk about. This is the secret serpent for the spy. Now I am a really big fan of the animal head Halloween cosmetics. I think it is one of the most fun parts of Scream Fortress. And giving spy a snake head is something that should have happened like five years ago. Like why do we not already have something like this? This is perfect for spy. The modeling on this thing is absolutely pristine man and i love the texturing as well like this skull on the back of the hood like that is so cool the attention to detail that has gone into this thing i'm really impressed by it i don't believe the cigarette clips with the jaw either which is really nice i love the tongue poking out i love that it has facial flexes the only thing that might look a little bit off is like the head but there's really no other way to make this work because i'm pretty sure this like goes 
on top of Spy's default head. I could be wrong. I could be very wrong, but I'm pretty sure it has to be this big so that there isn't clipping with like Spy's stock head. You know what I mean? I'm not entirely sure. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's why it's like that. As far as loadout combinations go, I mean, Spy has a ton of snake cosmetics. I mean, you can see the slithering scarf right there. He also has the backstabbers boom slang. Like you could do a full snake loadout. You could have the secret serpent, the slithering scarf, and the backstabbers boom slang. Well, that just sounds fun, man. Like, come on, I want that. And you could use the uh, the Rapt Reviver Mark II uh, war paint as well, because that's like a snakeskin kind of war paint. They do also have a video showing off in game, I believe to show off the facial flexes and everything. You can see how lively this thing looks when he talks, the mouth actually moves and everything. I love that they did it on snake water as well. Very, very good looking dude. Like this is just the quintessential Halloween animal head in my opinion. I would love to see this one get in as a bonus item. Next up here, we have the Southern Shooter Taunt for the Engineer. Now this is one I've been really excited to show off because my Engineer is like a cowboy Western kind of theme and this would be perfect for my Engineer loadout. Check this thing out, dude. Like, this is the most engineer taunt I have ever seen, dude. I love it. I love the animation. I love how clean it is. I just, I think it's so suited for engineer. And it just makes me wonder why engineer doesn't have a revolver secondary weapon. Please, please, Valve, please. <laughs> At the very least, can you give us the revolver taunts? Like, this prop is beautiful. The icon is gorgeous, man. This is a really well-made taunt. I'm honestly surprised it didn't get more attention uh, as far as awards go, because like usually taunts get flooded with awards. This is one of my favorite taunts of the season, honestly. Like I really like this one. That is gonna bring us into the reanimator set for the medic, starting out here with the hat, which is gonna be the graveyard shift. It's gonna be this really dingy, stitched up old hat, and then some long hair for Medic. This is a far deviation for anything that we really have for Medic currently, and I think there's gonna be a lot of fun that could be had with this as far as loadout combos go. Pairing it with the second opinion actually goes really hard. With the Tomb Readers, man, that is insane. And I believe they have even more over here. Yeah, okay, there's gonna be some really good uses for this thing. You've probably already noticed there are two different paint styles so you can paint the hat or you can paint the hair. Very, very nice that they give you the option to do that. Now that's gonna lead us into the Resurrectionist's Regalia, and that is gonna be the body cosmetic for the set. Now something that immediately caught my eye is this like fingerless glove effect that they have going on. I have never seen this done for Medic, and I think it's such a novel idea. As far as the actual body cosmetic, you do get a custom emblem, which is pretty cool. I like the whole fit here. I like the color choices as well with that waterlogged lab coat kind of deal. It is going to pair amazingly with the graveyard shift hat, and it still does leave you one extra slot free to slot in I mean, whatever you feel like, really. I think it could be cool to pair it with the quoth. That would be a really cool pet cosmetic, like having a crow slash raven following this like graveyard shift medic. That's going to look pretty cool, man. They do have some loadouts here as well. Unfortunately, no quoth to be seen. But what I like about this is Medic has so many good body cosmetics. It's hard to stand out and make a body cosmetic that is going to stand on its own two feet. Medic mains are absolutely spoiled for choice, but I think this one brings a lot of unique things to the table that other body cosmetics just don't do. I think it would have a lot of really good uses and the paint region on it is very good. It's gonna paint the tie exactly what I would wanna see here. Overall, really good set for Scream Fortress. That's gonna lead us right into the aim frame and this is gonna be a hat for the sniper. I saw this one in development and I have been so excited for it to release. The promotional poster for this thing is gorgeous, but the hat itself, I really like this one, dude. It reminds me of the headbanger that Demoman got a couple updates ago. One thing I really like is this battery pack that's bolted to the side of the helmet. I think that's a cool way of bringing some of that TF2 character to this, so that way it doesn't just feel like an out of place, super modern military helmet. I think they did a good job of making this like high tech scope, like 
big cartoony it's got this big battery pack attached to it like it's not you know it's too realistic in my opinion now sniper is no stranger to military themed cosmetics you are going to get a ton of use out of this thing especially with the recent csgo inspired set that got added this is going to be a really fun one to make loadouts with now the paint region is going to paint the scope it's a pretty cool region i don't really have any complaints with that overall just a nice hat dude i love these simple solo hats they're just they're by themselves they're not part of a set i just find them to be charming you know what i mean i just i love these like solo ideas next up here we have the dead man's party unusual taunt effect now they only have the gift here to show it off but you can get the idea smoke is gonna pull out you're gonna have these gravestones bursting up skeleton arms bursting up ghosts coming out of the ground it looks absolutely awesome dude for all the things that are going on it's not overly busy it's not as flashy as a lot of other unusual taunt effects and i think this is gonna work really really well as a scream fortress unusual effect I like this one a lot, dude. Like, I would be happy to unusualify one of these. Now we're gonna have a look at the Krampus Frat Z. I'm sure I said that totally accurate, and nobody's gonna yell at me in the comments. <laughs> Jokes aside, this is gonna be a really awesome Halloween head cosmetic for Medic. I think this definitely would be Halloween restricted. I would be very surprised if it wasn't, though it is kind of teetering on the line. I really like the different styles that they have here, where they have the friendly fire, where it just has like team colored eyes eyes and then the hellfire style where it has a bunch of coloring in the hair as well it's cool to give you that option and i think this is very fitting for the medic especially because that one scene in the comments where he like outsmarts the devil like the literal devil it's a pretty cool idea man and it's executed very very well i think you can make some interesting loadouts with this one it is going to be a really nice halloween cosmetic paint region it's gonna paint all the hair as you would expect and they even included the concept art which is pretty cool now we're gonna be getting into the haunted hull war paint now this is another war paint that i made by myself now uh this is definitely a very very late <laughs> very late submission i don't think this one has a chance of getting into the case but i was i'm proud of this one man i think it came out really cool i wanted to make a war paint primarily using Zephaniah's Greed because I think it's such an underrated paint can color. I used Zephaniah's Greed for the wood, I used After 8 for the metal, and then for the custom wear texture, I used Indubitably Green. So this is going to tie into the colors that are already into the game super well. It's not going to be overly bright. And I themed this around like the Cursed Cove pirate ship, as you can probably tell. The wear texture has albedo tinting, so it's going to be shiny while the rest of these textures are going to be pretty flat so it's going to look like kind of ghostly spectral energy you know what i mean it's a crazy idea that i had like it started as oh i want to use zephaniah's greed for something and then it turned slowly but surely into like this ghost pirate ship concept and i really like it dude i really like how this one came out i love doing these simple war paints like this it's kind of the metal and wood classic that you would expect but with a little bit of a halloween twist to it even if this one's probably too late for the update i just wanted to show this one off man i really like how this one came out now we're going to be having a look at the action architect set for the engineer starting out here with the hat which is going to be the dell dynamic now this is something that i think is really good for engineer it reminds me of the demo man set that we got last update where it's kind of like this superhero outer space kind of vibe for engineer though i feel like this works really well because he has so many different space themed cosmetics even space themed weapons that this could work with like you could use this with the pomsen i know sacrilegious okay i suggested to use the pomsen you could use it with the capper if you can somehow afford one of those things in current year or you could use it with the plethora of robo and space cosmetics that engineer has like there is a lot of mix and match potential. I really like it with the cute suit and the wavefinder, actually. That is a really fun way of doing this. And the paint region as well surprised me because it's going to paint like this fabric. It's not going to paint the helmet. I don't know how I feel about it. I kind of like it. I kind of don't. But either way, it doesn't really matter because it has the team spirit coloring and then like the cream spirit secondary team coloring. So no matter what, it's going to tie into every loadout under the sun by default. And I really do like the attention to detail with that cream spirit coloring. Like you have it on the emblem here and then you do have it on the visor. 
I love it when people use secondary team coloring. It is so nice. But all of that goes without mentioning the Constructors cover, which is gonna be the body cosmetic for the set. Now, the thing I like about this is how kind of cartoony it is. Like this big battery pack at the back here, you can really tell that this was made to pair with the capper because obviously the capper is powered by batteries that you put into the clip slash magazine slash don't yell at me, please. It's a fictional sci-fi gun, please, please. My point is, this is gonna be a really good pairing with the capper, and by itself, it does look pretty cool. It's got a unique vibe to it. Again, it reminds me of that Demo Man set that we got for summer. I like that it took this kind of cartoony, unique approach. It's not super futuristic looking. The batteries are a nice touch. And again, it's gonna have some amazing combo potential. I wish they showed it with the Beef Man though. I wish they would have showed it with the beef man. It does look really good with this other robot head though. And with the Dell dynamic, it looks really nice, dude. Like this just really gives me that space superhero kind of vibe. It looks sick. I think it's gonna fit really well uh, in TF2 with all the other space themed cosmetics and weapons that we already have. Very good set, dude, very good. Next up here, we have the spyware, and this is gonna be like a mask misc for the spy. It's gonna give him this really well textured robo head. Now we've seen a lot of robo heads for spy on the workshop this year, and I've featured a couple of them if I remember correctly. Like it, it is hard to pick a favorite, man. There have been some really good ones. I honestly can't even pick a favorite, but I really do like this one. The texturing on this, the coloring on this, it is gonna pair so well into different loadouts. The paint region is gonna paint the lenses. Perfect paint region for this. I think it would have been weird if it painted the metal. I love the shine on this. It's not overbearing, but you can still tell that it is supposed to be metal. And obviously you're gonna be able to use this for like an observer spy loadout, which they don't really show here, but it is the, the potential is there, man. We can upgrade Observer Spy just a little bit more. And that is something I'm always game for. This is another one that I think would make a really good like Commando or Assassin grade. It's just a good robo head for Spy, dude. I love stuff like this. Now we're gonna be getting into a really creative unusual effect. And this is something that I am ashamed that I didn't think of. It's an unusual effect called Unusual Feeling themed around the unusual smoke that is found on like the unusual fire hats. It is gonna be team colored, even though unusual fires always show like the red smoke. Very good call making this team colored. If I had to nitpick, I don't like the purplish smoke at the bottom. Like blue should just be blue in my opinion for something like this where it's gonna be team colored and it's all red on red. And then you have a little bit of purple on blue. It irks me a little bit, but I still really like this effect. It's simple, it's a really cool reference to something that we have in the game. And you can see it in game here. I, I like this one a lot, dude. Like this is just a really smart concept and I think it was well executed here. It's simple, but honestly, like I said before, not every unusual effect needs to have like 15 different particles going on. I really savor these simpler unusual effects because you gotta have a really good concept, otherwise simplicity isn't really gonna work. This is an instance where I think simplicity is a really good strength and this one just works well, dude. I like this one a lot. I would probably even and buy one of these. I mean, I'm a serial unusual fire anyway. How could I not? Now, speaking of novel concepts, we're going to be getting into the carry van. This is going to be a Halloween restricted misc for the sniper from the mind of one questionably sane chicken man. I... <laughs> This is the kind of cosmetic I expect from my boy. This came out really, really nicely, dude. I saw this one in development. I thought it was such a fun idea and it really came together upon release. I know it technically falls into like the cardboard cosmetic bin, but I think it's different because this is a Halloween restricted item. It's meant to be a Halloween costume. It makes sense. We've gotten this kind of thing before as like a bonus item that's Halloween restricted. And this would be a really good one for Sniper to get in my opinion. It's it's different from anything he currently has. I really like that it pairs with the ostrich cosmetic. Oh God, I thought they were gonna clip that actually works. I, so, I did not see that before recording this video. That's actually gold, okay, I love that. 
This is the kind of thing I want out of Scream Fortress, dude. Like, yes, I want good cosmetics, but if those good cosmetics can be used to make some cursed abominations, that's like 30% of the fun of Scream Fortress, man, is making those beyond cursed Halloween restricted loadouts. I think this would be a really fun one to mess around with. I think it is criminally underrated on the workshop. I like this one a lot, dude. Like this came out really good. Now I'll tell you something that is definitely not criminally underrated. Look at the amount of awards. This hasn't even been on the workshop for a month, dude. And that's how you know this is a really good taunt. This is the Morning Mercs taunt by Stakey. I'm gonna skip just to where they show how it works in game, but this is gonna be an all class taunt. The animation is so fluid and clean. I love the jiggle bones on it as well. I love that each class has a very unique, distinct animation. This is gonna be a long video though, so I am just gonna let this one play and show them all off. I really like Heavy's one as well. When I mean, you can tell, it's probably the best one because it is featured in the thumbnail, but each mercenary has their own unique animation. And I love it when people do taunts like this because you're effectively making nine different taunts. It is a stupid amount of work, but when you do it with a really good concept and it all comes together, it is worth all of that extra work. Now, one thing I really like is Sniper's one where he doesn't like break down in tears or anything. He just kind of like kicks the ground and shrugs it off, which is something that my professional would do. It makes a lot of sense, dude. I like that one a lot. Probably my favorite animation personally out of the bunch. I, I like Scout just quietly sobbing in the corner as well. It is a really good taunt, man. It is gonna have a lot of uses like imagine you lose a round or like imagine you're on two for it right and everyone's saying don't cap the intelligence don't cap the intelligence your teammate captures the intelligence and ends the game you already know i'm gonna be using this taunt dude it's unique it's well made it serves a purpose that we don't already have in the game I would be very surprised if this one doesn't get in. Like, I, I feel like this is a shoe in Even if it doesn't get in for this update, older taunts get in all the time. I feel like we're gonna see this one get in at some point. Like, it's just inevitable. Now we're gonna be getting into the Platoon Raccoon. Now, this is something I'm very surprised that Soldier doesn't already have. Like, why do we not have a Raccoon head for Soldier? It makes all of the sense in the world for a Halloween restricted bonus item. The modeling on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. The facial flexes look amazing. I know some people see stuff like this and they think furry bait, yada, 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 but we've been getting animal heads for like 10 years. Like it's just a part of Scream Fortress at this point. And like it or not, the reason most people transmute is to get like the bird heads and stuff like that. Like a lot of people love this kind of thing, even outside of it being quote unquote furry bait. Like there's, there's a lot of use for this thing, man. And I fall into that category where I just think this kind of stuff is silly. And I love to see it for Scream Fortress, especially when it can pair with the other raccoon cosmetics that Soldier has. Like this is gonna have some really cool combo potential. And they even went the extra length of giving it a second cosmetic, which is the Covert Critter, which which is gonna give him uh, the paws and the tail just to kind of complete the look. But one thing that I love is that if you pair it with, <laughs> with the war dog, you... <laughs> the world is not ready for this. Mug maniacs rise up. This is gonna be... Oh, it's gonna be an experience if this gets into the game. I feel like a lot of people are gonna be running this combo and it is gonna be a very fun time to be alive. Now they do show off the animal head in game as well. And you can see the jiggle bones on the whiskers. You can see the facial flexes. It's all insanely well done. And I'm just impressed with this one, man. I love the animal heads for Scream Fortress. And as far as those go, this is one of the best ones we've gotten all year. Like it, it is just next level, really well made. Next, we have the expressive soldier, which is gonna be a hat for, you guessed it, the soldier. Now, what I really like about this one is the story behind it. They have this little comic uh, doing this little story here where soldiers complaining that he can't see and engineer builds him this little helmet with eyes on it. I don't care what you say. This is canon. I don't care. It needs to be canon. It's such an adorable little story and I can absolutely see this happening. 
honestly, this might be more fitting for Smithsmiths because this would be such an adorable little story for Smithsmiths, like the uh, the gift exchange hat, if anybody remembers that one. I love it when people tell a little story with cosmetics, like there's a little bit of lore in there that works within the TF2 canon, like this kind of stuff's just cute, man. And even all of that aside, this is a cool cosmetic, like it's facial flexed, so the eyes are actually going to change depending on your voice lines, your emotion, if you're getting shot at currently. And it's gonna have more variety than you probably would assume assume initially like there's a lot of cool stuff you could do with this pairing it with the peace breaker especially i really like that combo dude now the paint region is going to paint the lens and this little top wire which i think is definitely a good paint region for this i also really like that the texture is animated so you can see this little scrolling thing going on here i also like the little emotion selector that they have here they have like happy angry dead uh kind of just indifferent and then like in love like that's cool it's just a nice little detail to have on there the bent antenna as well you can see the facial flexes here oh and the slider actually works what okay i didn't know the slider actually works that's actually sick okay no this, that just bumped it up so much in my eyes dude that is such a cool thing amazing concept amazing execution like this is borderline magic to me dude i am very very impressed even the concept art like actually remained very much unchanged from the concept art which i'm glad for because this looks absolutely awesome dude i love this one dude it's such a cute story it's such a good concept it is a great execution that's gonna bring us into the gateway grasps unusual taunt effect now this is a really novel concept for an unusual taunt effect and honestly, you gotta see it in game to get the idea. Check this out, dude. As you're moving around, these little skeleton hands are gonna be coming out of the portals to try and grab you. Such a novel concept for Scream Fortress. And like every year, I feel like, oh, it's all already been done before. Like how, how much further can you take like the magic and skeletons and pumpkins and Halloween bosses? Like what more can you do with that concept? And every year I am proven horribly wrong because like this is so novel, dude. It's unique from anything we currently have. It looks great. It's not too loud. I like this one a lot, dude. It's a good concept. It is a really good concept. And it's hard to make Scream Fortress effects that aren't samey, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of them are like magic, pumpkin, skeleton, with no real deviation or innovation. But this, I've never seen anything like this before done in this way. Like, it's just, it's cool. It's really, really cool. I also love like the yellowish orange version that just gives me Doctor Strange vibes. Very, very cool effect, dude. I would definitely try to get this on my demo, man. Like, this green version would look so cool, dude. Now we're going to be getting into the bare, bare bones hat for the heavy, and it is going to give him this really awesome skull. Now, this is what I mean when I say I like these solo hat submissions, because you could make, like, a whole caveman or hunter-themed set around this, but by just doing the hat, I think you open it up to interpretation. People can make their own loadouts with it. You could take it kind of a demon direction. You could take it more of a hunter direction. You could take it like a Mad Max apocalypse kind of direction. Honestly, this is probably my favorite direction of them all. Like that looks really cool. The paint region is gonna paint like this smear on the side of the helmet. And one thing that I thought was really clever is it's invisible until you paint it. Like that's, that's a novel idea. And I've never really seen something like that done before. Normally it would just paint the entire skull and it would be whatever. Like it'd be what you would expect, but doing something like this adds that little bit of extra personality to this hat. And I think it's a really smart move. It's just a really novel hat, dude. I like this one a lot. I think it would be fitting for Halloween. It's got more loadout combinations than I think people would expect out of this. Next, we have the missing and melting war paint. Now, this is a concept that we have seen done a million times where you have the missing source texture texture as a war paint, but I really like how they executed it this time around. This version by Animated Glitch, it takes it and it dumbs down the colors a little bit so it's not super saturated. You can see how scuffed up the squares are even in Factory New, so it doesn't just look like a solid checker pattern. And it has a little bit of albedo tinting just to give it 
that little bit of extra flavor. And I believe it's like a field tested one, but this has got to be one of my favorite executions of this idea because it's not overly loud. It doesn't just look like a static checker pattern like some of the other ones do. This is a really smart take on the missing texture idea. And I think it came out really well, dude. I like this like dripping thing that they have going on with some of the, uh, the purple magenta squares. You can see it dripping down a little bit. It just gives it a little bit more going on so that it doesn't just feel like a bunch of squares and i really appreciate that like these awards are absolutely insane like this just does not happen for war paint so clearly they've done something right here and i think it is well deserved man this is a good war paint great execution i like this one a lot dude this, this came out really good i'm gonna be saying that a lot in this video okay you gotta understand this is combining like some of my favorite items from the season i can't not repeat myself man there's only so many ways i can say that something is cool and i'm gonna be doing it again with the scrumpy slayer set for the demo man we're gonna start out here with the beast bane's brim which is going to be the hat cosmetic a really nice hat cosmetic at that i like the plume i like the little bit of wear at the back of the hat there like it's actually been in a fight you know it's gotten scratched up a little bit i mean it's the bane of a beast so i'm assuming a beast scratched it up a little bit this was a colossal dragon that did this the paint region interestingly is going to paint the plume now if i was gonna be really nitpicky I would say I would want a style just to paint like the fabric of the hat instead of the plume, but I think just having this style is fine. It's not a big deal because again, like this, this uh, soft black color ties into stock demo man really well. So no matter what, it's going to work in a loadout. They do have some different loadouts with it. And obviously demo man has so many different cosmetics that could pair into something like this. The options are pretty much limitless. But where things get really interesting to me is with the Hunter's Hide. This is the body cosmetic, and I don't know how they did all this with one slot, dude. Like, this just looks insane. The armor, the fabric, this little, like, coat part right here, it, it is nuts. As somebody who plays more Demo Knight than Demo Man, I would probably be ditching my two Woomba tunic for this thing. The only thing is I wish it was paintable. I wish you could paint this white part because sometimes this is gonna stick out and it's gonna be annoying. I think it would be fine to paint this part. That being said though, the amount of loadouts this would work in, obviously you can use it for like a pirate thing, but mainly you take it like a night direction and it is going to look sick. We do have the concept art as well. And interestingly, they had a weapon that was gonna go along with this. Pretty cool design. And it just makes me wish that we actually got new weapons, honestly. Where are the new weapons, Valve, please? I would not be surprised if we saw this one get in, dude. It is top quality. And the fact that this is two slots, just impressive, man. It is just impressive. Next, we have the October Operator, and this is going to be a body cosmetic for the medic, not part of a cosmetic set. It is by itself just one lone body cosmetic against the world. Now, you already know I love to see that cream spirit team coloring. You have it on the emblem, you have it on the little stitching right here, and you have it on the threads right here. For the shirt, you have that lovely waterlogged lab coat paint color. I'm gonna tie in seamlessly with Medic's tail coat, which is really nice. And obviously, it is gonna pair perfectly with the Octopus. October Fester, but outside of that, it has a lot of other uses. I really like this one with the Tyrolene. I think that is a really cool loadout. Now the paint region is going to paint all of this leather part right here. I don't think it's too big. I, I would much rather this than it paint the shirt. Pretty good paint region. We do have the concept art as well, which is something I always love to see, dude. Very, very nice stuff. I also love the hairy arms that it gives Medic as well. In case you need a diet burly beast, I mean, there you go, because God, who could afford the burly beast in this economy? <laughs> Jokes aside, really nice cosmetic, good execution. I love that it ties into a hat that we got recently as well. 
there's gonna be a lot of uses for this thing and I think it came out pretty nice. Now we're gonna be checking out the Ancient Scriptures Unusual Effect and this is gonna be another nice and simple effect. The colors on this are really good as well. I like the green. I like the orange. I really like the purple. I think the purple is going to be the favorite of the bunch. It's a really nice way of doing this kind of magic concept without making it be super, super busy. And for the people who are into it, I think this would be a really good combo effect. Like you pair this with burning flames, you pair this with scorching flames, you pair this with like nebula or something. There's, there's some pretty cool combo potential here, even if I'm not a fan of stacked unusual effects. In game, I really like how minimalistic this thing is. Like you can see the unusual effects, but it's not super, super loud and overbearing. That's something that I really grown to appreciate this year with unusual effects is just ones that have that little bit of restraint. I think it just looks really good and it reminds me of like the older Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 unusual effects, which are always going to be really hard to top, even if they have aged a little bit. I'm a big fan of this one, dude. This is a nice unusual effect. It's not overbearing, but it is obviously for Scream Fortress. It makes sense. It's got good combo potential. I like it, man. I like it. Next, we're going to be getting into the case of murder. This is going to be a hat for the spy, and it is going to give him this nice hat along with this little bird that has decided to tag along. I got to say, it's pretty cool that they managed to cram all of this into one cosmetic, and the coloring on this is very nice. It's going to match spy's balaclava. Now, when I saw this, one loadout combo came to mind immediately, and unfortunately, they don't show it off here, but this would be really cool to pair with the Aristotle. And I'm pretty sure you'd be able to use this with the avian amante, which is the crow head for spy. I don't know why they didn't show that off here. Like that is the de facto loadout. I think a lot of people are going to be doing with this. But that being said, they do show off some pretty nice ones here. The paint region is going to paint the hat itself. If I was going to be nitpicky, I think it would have been cool to have a style that paints the feather and the bird because like you could make it into like a white bird. You could make it into a phoenix with like orange paint. I mean, there's there's some cool potential there, you know? Slight nitpick aside though, I really like this one. I think this would be a really good solo hat for Spy. Obviously, it's going to work really well for Scream Fortress. It's going to work really well for Spy and his whole vibe and all the cosmetics he has. I really like these occasional hats where it's a hat and a pet cosmetic, like uh, the Bird Keeper's Brim for Medic. That, that's one I covered a long time ago, but it is one of my all-time favorite Medic cosmetics, dude. I wish they'd just add that thing already. Please, 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 please. <laughs> now we're finally getting into another taunt. This one is the Borrowed Bones taunt. We can check it out with the video over here, and I'm just going to skip through the cinematic so we can see the taunt. Now, what really impressed me with this is the amount of jiggles on this skeleton. Like, I, how? <laughs> how did they manage to do this much with just a taunt? It's so impressive, man. Like, how expressive this prop is. It really sells the taunt, in my opinion. Like, if this was super static and rigid looking, I feel like the entire taunt would fall apart. But this works really well. I think this would be a really funny, like, kill cam kind of taunt and very suited for medic. Let's be honest, he is not better than this. This is this is not a sane individual. Very cool taunt for Scream Fortress. I would not be surprised if we saw this one get in. Now we're going to continue with another item. This is the Hellenic Healer set for the medic. I guarantee you I mispronounced that. Please, please, please comment section. Let me live. It is going to be based around an old philosopher kind of look. And this is something that I'm just surprised Medic doesn't already have. Like we have the Solemn Vow. This feels like a really natural thing that Medic would have gotten a long time ago, honestly. <laughs> Especially the hair cosmetic. Like this just makes a lot of sense. And the modeling on this thing. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. Like the waves on this thing. I don't even know how you do that. It looks so good, man. Very fitting for TF2. I think that came out amazingly. And obviously, as it is a hair cosmetic, the amount of versatility with this thing is near limitless. But in case that wasn't enough for you, 
it does have an alternate style, the wiser style, where it gives him gray hair and the best hairline I've ever seen. Gonna make him look a little bit more like the Solemn Vow, and I think it's really cool that they give you the option to do that. Obviously, the paint region is just gonna paint the entire thing because the entire thing is hair, and that's generally what hair cosmetics are supposed to do. Now, we also have the Scholar's Stola. Now, this is gonna have some really nice robes and some even nicer muscles for the medic. I know I joked about like a discount burly beast before, but I'm telling you, man, these muscle cosmetics, they always just skyrocket in value. It is insane. <laughs> That's why I'm really glad they made the Bushman for Sniper a mercenary grade, so that way it can't get aped to like 40 keys if it was an assassin grade. Stuff like this should definitely be like mercenary or commando grade because people will just jack up the prices. TF2 players are not saying individuals. <laughs> Even all jokes aside, like this is a well-made cosmetic. The modeling on this thing looks gorgeous and the combo potential, there's a lot more than you would initially expect, I think. Like all of these work really well. The Crown of the Old Kingdom, the Weather Master, the Cheater's Lament, the Hardy Laurel, like these are hats that you never see used and having something like this would finally give them a reason to exist. It would retroactively buff so many different items, and that is something I love to see, dude. I love seeing older items being brought to the forefront because they finally get something to tie into. The paint region for this is going to paint like this middle part of the cloth. Perfect paint region. I think painting like this entire white part would just be egregious, honestly. And it's already lab coat colored, so like, you just shouldn't mess with it. Like, it's always gonna work no matter what loadout it's in. They do show it off in-game as well, and this looks really good, dude. It's distinct from anything that Medic has currently, but it's also gonna have a lot of combo potential, which, like, what more can you ask for in a body cosmetic, dude? This is a really good set. It, it's just really, really good, man. Next up here, we have the Screaming Eagle for the Soldier, and this is one that I have been really excited to talk about. I don't know what it is about this one, dude. I just, I really like it, you know? The promotional poster, it looks amazing. Whoever did this, like, can you print one out and send it to me? I would hang this in my room. This looks very good. <laughs> the cosmetic itself, man. I love this concept, dude. I love this concept of giving Soldier one of these luchador wrestling masks. It's got this eagle pattern on it as well. It's just novel, and it gives you a style that keeps the helmet or removes the helmet, which is pretty cool. I just love that they did it in a similar style to the large luchador for heavy. Like, that's just fun, man. That's just really fun. I love that combo. And even outside of a wrestler loadout, I mean, there's some different things you can do with this. I really like it with the crown of the old kingdom. Like, this is a hat you never see used. Like, I, honestly, I forget it exists <laughs> frequently. And it's just cool to see older hats like that being revitalized with the addition of new cosmetics. The paint region is going to paint the eagle pattern. Now, I think it looks really interesting when you paint it white. I don't know, there might be some interesting uh, loadout combos you can do with that maybe. I just really like this cosmetic, dude. This is one that like, I just, I, I like it, you know? It's just, it's such a cute concept. I love it when they tie items together like that, like just that little bit of lore. It's fun. It's just really fun, dude. I think this one came out really nice. I'm a big fan of this one personally. I would love to see this one get in. Now we have the Ancient Summon Unusual Taunt Effect, and I believe this one is like the sister effect to the Ancient Scriptures Unusual Effect, which was a hat effect. This one is a taunt effect. Two different things, but they would pair very nicely together. It does have the same colors going on where you have the green, you have the orange, and you have the purple. Again, I feel like the purple would be the most popular one. It seems like these purple magic-y effects are always very, very popular. These would have a lot of combo potential with other Halloween unusual effects that we already have. Uh, like, they match up with the colors of different effects that we have very, very well. In-game, this looks really good, dude. I think it strikes a good balance of being loud and having a lot going on, which, if you're spending money on an unusual taunt effect, you want it to be pronounced and, like, very flashy, you know? But it's not overbearing. A lot of it is this floor sprite, which I think is very cool. You have a little bit of, like, that wisp going up, those little letters, symbols coming up. 
it's a good balance and it just looks really good it's distinct from a lot of other effects we have i mean i know we've had like these summoning circle things in the past like off the top of my head i know there's like infernal smoke and stuff like that but i mean i th i think it's different enough you know what i mean it can stand on its own two feet the sprites on this are really good i like this spawn in effect it does where like you see it when it lands it has that little puff of smoke little details like that man i dig them now we're gonna be getting into one that i have been really excited to talk about this is the investor which is gonna be a body cosmetic for the engineer this one was made by whirlmon and you already know what that means we got four different styles we got uptick recession boom and depression perfect names for like an economist themed body cosmetic i really like the different tie styles the different vest colors like it's just fun, man. I really like it when people do stuff like this. Instead of just doing a basic tie and no tie style, they took it to that next level and they give you so many different things to work with. Like it's almost four different cosmetics, which honestly is good because like we need more body cosmetics, man. The loadout potential that this is gonna have, dude. It is nuts. The amount of things you're going to be able to do with this because of these different styles. It's basically Engineer's Sunday vest. I mean, like this is really well done. The paint region is going to paint the tie, which I think is a perfect paint region for this. You don't want anything too loud and crazy. And that's another reason why I like that they do different colors for the shirt, different colors for the vest, and it's all stuff that makes sense within Engineer's stock color palette. Like these are all colors that he can work with and they're gonna tie into loadouts without causing any problems. I was just really impressed by this dude. Like the level of understanding that Whirlmon has of how to make a cosmetic with all these different styles and all of them be useful in loadout combos. Like that's that's something that is not easy to do man like this is dare i say one of the best engineer cosmetics i've ever seen i really like this one this would be a game changer for engineer loadouts if it got in i really want this one to get in i could not give this one a higher praise like when i say it is engineer's sunday vest that is the highest compliment i can give to it man this is about as good as it gets man Hats off to Whirlmon, this, this is nuts. Next up here, we have the Brain Rotted War Paint. Now, this was a really novel concept, and it's a concept that I don't normally like very much, where when it wears down, it's gonna reveal this blood texture. Now, me being someone who only plays on blue team, I really don't like it when War Paints and Cosmetics and whatever else introduces blood, because like, it's red on blue team and it irks me. I just don't like it. It makes me feel icky. But for this, it makes a lot of sense. It's zombie flesh, which is gonna pair really nicely into zombie loadouts. Very fitting for Halloween. The brain texture looks really good. It's stylized. It's not overly busy. It's nice and pale. It's not super loud. And even the blood itself, like the shade of red that they chose here, it's gonna match, first of all, like the default wear blood splatter that you get. And then to have that kind of tie together is nice. They didn't pick a super saturated red, which I do appreciate. This would be amazing to use with zombie cosmetics because zombie cosmetics already have like that little bit of blood all over. You know what I mean? Like it would just tie so well. This would be a really good one to get into the Scream Fortress case. I don't know if it's too late to have a chance. I hope it has a chance, man, because this, this is a good one. Also, the fact that they showed it off on the fish, 10 out of 10, perfection. You got my vote, dude. You got my vote. Next, we have the Terror Trooper set for the soldier, starting out here with the War Machine, which is going to be the head cosmetic. Now, I'm not sure if this one would be Halloween restricted or not, because it kind of poses a weird conundrum because like would you halloween restrict the head and then leave the armor unrestricted i'm not sure how they do it i'm not even sure if this needs to be restricted but i don't know it's something that kind of piqued my interest a little bit all of that aside like this is an amazing looking cosmetic the modeling on this thing 
top tier, super scary looking. The loadout potential is going to be really fun with this. It's also going to pair really nicely with like the cow mangler, the bison, the palmson, I guess, if they ever let soldier use that thing. But all of the laser weapons that are in the game that soldier can use, like that's going to be a pretty cool combo, man. The paint region is going to paint the eyes, which I think is perfect. I think painting all of this metal would be a little bit too much, to be honest. Now we also have the body cosmetic here, which is the iron hide. And this thing has a lot more loadout potential than I think you would expect from this thing. Like you can tie this into soldier loadouts because obviously it is armor. I would be interested to see how this would tie into like a samurai kind of loadout, how this might be able to tie with like the brass bucket if you paint it, you know? There's some interesting combo potential here, but my favorite of all is pairing it with the battle bird i love the battle bird so much dude it is such an underrated cosmetic in my opinion even though it's halloween restricted it's so nice man i remember transmuting for one of these things i love it to death it's very nostalgic for me it's very dear to me i love this cosmetic though what sucks about the battle bird is it doesn't really have anything to tie into and Pairing it with the Ironhide looks absolutely beautiful, man. I wish this were possible. I would love for this to get into the game, and I would definitely rock this uh, as, like, my Halloween loadout, you know what I mean? Again, I love it when new cosmetics can retroactively buff older cosmetics into viability, because there are so many cosmetics in this game that are hard to make loadouts with. Even if they're good cosmetics, they don't have anything to tie with. Stuff like this just makes me smile, man. Like, I, I love this. I love this kind of thing. Overall, fantastic set. It looks amazing with the Terra Trooper as well. Like, as a complete set, this is great. But I'm going to be honest, like, this just knocks it out of the park for me. I love it with the Battlebird. Please, Valve. Please give me this. <laughs> Next up here, we have the Back Pain, which is going to be a misc for the Engineer, the Medic, and the Sniper. Now, obviously, as you can see here, it is going to give them three of Spy's default knife stabbed directly into their back. And one thing that I really like is this knife right here has jiggle bones, like it's going to be flopping around as you run, which is pretty cool. But what I love about this is the loadout potential. You could pair this with the beaten and bruised. You could pair this with the zombie souls. Like there are some really cool Halloween themed loadouts you could do with this and I think it would be a joy to work with. Now I know it's kind of hard to see the paint region here but it's going to paint the handle of the knife. Now what's interesting about this is if you paint it value of teamwork you can actually make it look identical to the team serviced war paint if you were to put it on a knife so there's some interesting potential there, you know, like there's there's something fun you could do with that. You could have a little bit of lore between your characters, like your spy has the team service knife and then like your engineer has the team service knife in his back. I mean, I don't know, man. There's something there. There's something there. It's a pretty clever idea. And I think the jiggle bones on this knife also really sell it like it, it looks very visually interesting, man. And it's just something that you don't see very often. Pretty cool. I would definitely not be surprised if we saw this one get in as a misc in the next case. Next, we have the unusual flying object unusual effect. And this, you, you already know if you've watched these videos from me before, you know I have a soft spot for orbiting effects that actually make good use of the orbiting template because, let's face it, most orbiting unusual effects look like total garbage. That's why they're worth basically nothing. You have to pay most people to take them from you. Like, they're, they're awful, man. I'm talking about, like, orbiting fire, power surge, that kind of thing. Like, nobody really wants them. But with something like this, they take the orbiting effect and they make it into something interesting, into something novel that would work best as an orbiting effect. Like, this makes a lot of sense and the sprite work on this UFO looks really good, dude. You see this thing in game, it's not overly loud, but it makes good use of the orbiting effect. It looks really good. It makes a lot of sense, especially because we had like the whole invasion update and everything. There's a lot of different cosmetics this would pair really nicely with. I like this one, dude. Like this is just a solid effect. Now we're going to be following that one up with the King of Lizards. Now, let me assure any Japanese lawyers watching this video. This has nothing to do with Godzilla. This is not Godzilla. This is 
Uh, uh, King, King, King of Lizard. <laughs> It sounds like a name you would see on like a bootleg Godzilla toy. <laughs> jokes aside, man, jokes aside, this is a really gorgeous cosmetic. This is gonna be for Pyro, and it's gonna give him this very big shoulder pet. The modeling on this thing is gorgeous. Now, normally I would complain about this off team coloring because it's red on red and then purple on blue, which is a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird, but luckily this is the paint region. So if you don't like this purple, you can just paint it team spirit, value of teamwork, whatever. And you can get those really cool blue accents, which is gonna match up with uh, the totally unrelated character, Godzilla <laughs> in the recent movies, where he has like that blue accent when he's charging up his beam. You could also paint it black or like after eight and hide the accents all together, which could look pretty cool. You could make it more into like a dinosaur kind of thing. They do have some different loadouts with it. I think it would be really interesting with like a knight or like a wizard kind of loadout. Like there's some fun to be had with this thing. It does also have the original concept art and you can see it's remained pretty much unchanged. I mean, they've made the head a little bit bigger, which is actually a pretty good call in my opinion, but it's remained mostly unchanged, which is pretty cool to see. I know not everybody likes pet cosmetics. Personally, I'm a massive fan of pet cosmetics. I love them. And this one I think is just really well done. It's suited for Halloween. It makes sense. It's kind of scary. I mean, in, in current year, could you, could you call the unrelated Godzilla movies, horror movies? I don't know, man. But it makes sense to me, and I think it would work pretty well as like an assassin grade or something. Now, we are going to be treated to another taunt. Now, this is another one that I feel like is criminally underrated. Like, like, where are all of the awards? Come on, man. Like, when I show you this taunt, I feel like you're going to get it really fast. This should definitely have some more awards. This is going to be all class. It is the Convict's Case Taunt. Every single class can have a unique animation where they hold up I don't know what you call it, the little police mugshot plaque thing. And that makes a lot of sense. Like, imagine you kill somebody with a random crit and then you whip this thing out like, hey, I know I'm guilty, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That, that just sounds funny to me, man. Especially as medic, like if you just whip around, uber saw crit somebody, like that's a, that's a fun little interaction, man. I also like that every single class has a unique number. I'm pretty sure it corresponds with their place on like the class lineup, if I'm not mistaken. Like Scout's one, Heavy's five, Spy is nine. Yeah, I think it does. It's a nice little detail. The two fort police department as well. Pretty nice attentions to detail on the prop. We can also see the original concept art, which I always love to see, like especially for more abstract things like taunts. It's always cool to see where these things come from. Very good idea really good execution like these animations look really nice they're all tailored to the individual character i like how pyro just kind of like shrugs the thing away like just flings it like let me let me rewind it actually like that's a cute little animation dude i like that one a lot a lot of character packed into this taunt animations very fluid would not be surprised if we saw this one get in. Next up, we have the Lab Rat set for the engineers, starting out here with the Quantum Cut. Now, this is something I love to see because I know we have the Einstein for engineer, okay? But can we admit that maybe it is not the best hair cosmetic? I never really liked how it looked. I'm gonna be honest, I never really liked how it looked, but this definitely encapsulates that mad scientist look better in my opinion. The modeling on this, again, very fitting for TF2. It's hard to make hair work for TF2, but I think a lot of the workshoppers have really got it dialed in now and they're doing some amazing work. They do have two different styles here as well. Mustache, no mustache, nice to have the option, of course. They do have some loadouts with it as well. And there's gonna be some really fun potential for this. I mean, with any hair cosmetic, you can pair it into pretty much anything. Like there, you can do a lot of different things with a hair cosmetic. But my favorite part has got to be the body cosmetic, the lawful lab wear. It is so distinct from anything the engineer currently has. It's also got three different styles. You got the doctor, the master, and the bachelor. I love these different styles, man. It's so cool. Bow tie, no bow tie, completely different shirt because why not? It's Whirlmon, this is just what he does. I also like the custom emblem on this band here. Like it's a little hazard sign. Nice little attention to detail there. They do have some different loadouts with it. Of course, they couldn't resist making a Walter White. 
I love I love current year. <laughs> you can do like a Bill Nye kind of thing. Like there, there's some fun things you can do with this. I love the not medic promo that they did. While it might confuse a new player for like two seconds before they figure it out, I think it's good to give Engineer a different addition to his color palette like he doesn't really have waterlogged lab coat and that would be such a fun thing to experiment with in different loadouts this is just the kind of thing i love to see especially the bachelor style it's got to be my favorite style i just i like that one a lot very good cosmetic set by this point in the video my voice is absolutely destroyed but i can't help but get excited for the lay civil which is going to be an absolute game changer for Spy. This is a pants cosmetic with four different styles, all of which geared to pair with body cosmetics we have in-game, body cosmetics that do not pair well with what Spy currently has. Spy's default pinstripe suit is the bane of body cosmetic makers everywhere because let's say you make this absolutely gorgeous smoking jacket. It's, an, it's a lovely assassin grade. Everyone likes it. The problem is when you equip it, Spy would normally have his default pinstripe pants down here and it would look really stupid. And that has been my biggest gripe with a lot of Spy's body cosmetics for the longest time. But this cosmetic solves that problem. It gives him some normal pants with a bunch of different styles to change up the color so it can, it can tie into all these different body cosmetics that Spy has, like especially the smoking jacket. The smoking jacket is so good but it's just nerfed because it always has to be used with either the breakneck baggies, which don't look that good in my opinion, or the default pinstripe uh, pants. This would be revolutionary to spy loadouts, and I think it's criminally underrated. Like, if you spend a lot of time on loadout.tf, chances are you are as excited about this as I am. This would be such a big addition to TF2 if it got in. It would be so nice to finally have something like this. Please, Valve, I know you don't like adding pants cosmetics, but please, please, just this once, can we have nice things? This would be so nice to have. I cannot express how much I like this. Like, I'm so happy that someone went and did this. Two-Ton Moon, you're a real one, dude. We've needed this for years. Like, this is so, so nice. I really hope it gets in at some point. Now, we're going to be following that one up with the knucklehead unusual effect. And this, this is just a really novel concept, man. I thought this one was really fun, where it is going to be a bunch of fists smacking the absolute crap out of you constantly. Don't ask me how you're supposed to play the game like this. I don't know. But the sprite work on this thing is gorgeous. I love the little impact lines that come off it when the punch connects. It is very cool looking. And you could probably pair it with like the beaten and bruised, even like the zombie cosmetics. You can do some fun stuff with this. I also like the restraint of not giving it color variants, just leaving it to be this like ghostly green. I th that's a bold choice and I respect it. Not every unusual effect needs to have three or more color variants. Like it's nice to see that little bit of restraint and this is a very nice effect. Again, it's hard to do something new for Scream Fortress because the same themes have been done over and over and over again every single year and it's refreshing to see something unique like this, even if it's a little weird, even if it's a little out there. I like it, man. Like, this is the kind of thing I like to see. It's just, it's well done. I like it. Next, we have the Badlands Shadow. This is going to be a hat for the Engineer. It's going to give him this really nice cowboy hat and this cool bandit mask, which has facial flexes. So you can see the eyes are actually going to move a little bit. That is insanely cool. I really, really like that concept. And obviously, Engineer is no stranger to Western cowboy themed cosmetics. There's going to be an infinite number of loadouts you can do with this. The paint region is going to be what you would expect. It's going to paint the fabric on the mask and then like this little band going around the hat as well. Good paint region, I really do like that. It is a solid, simple hat. I love to see this kind of thing. Not everything needs a cosmetic set, and something like this, it's gonna have so many options to pair with. All the cosmetics Engineer already has, like it doesn't need something to go with it. Good concept, good execution. Engineer's gonna be able to get a lot of use out of this thing. I like this one a lot, dude. Now we're gonna be getting into the Killer Kilroy War Paint. Now this is gonna be 
a really unique looking war paint. I love this kind of graffiti street art kind of style. I've seen this done a couple times and in my opinion, it doesn't translate very well in a Team Fortress 2 a lot of the times because a lot of the times it looks too busy or it doesn't look stylized very well. But with this, I think it rides the line very, very well. And the color choices as well, it gives me the vibes of like a war, like a World War II, a Vietnam War tank that's been like spray painted. Uh, I just, it, it makes sense to me, man. I don't know, it clicks. Something about the color scheme clicks really well to me. And I think this would be very cool uh, to pair with like the proof of purchase, any of like the military themed uh, cosmetics in the game. Like there's some very cool loadouts you could do with this. Of course, I do like that they couldn't resist adding the funny S though. I will say, you know what? I would rather the funny S than putting an Among Us in there. Like, <laughs> I, at least there was a little bit of restraint, okay? We gotta give them that. I like the stylization of this street art concept. Very well done, dude. Very well done. And now that's gonna bring us into the medical mummy set for the medic, starting out here with the head cosmetic, which is also called the medical mummy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't make the rules here, man. I just follow them. Now, this is going to have two different styles. It's gonna have the patient and the ancient, difference being this little bloody bandage spot right here. I like that they did this extra style so you could use this for like a mummy kind of thing. Again, what is it with all these cosmetics retroactively making the crown of the old kingdom so good? Pairing it with zombie cosmetics as well, like, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this, man. It's fun. Like this is one of those cosmetics that you really wouldn't expect to have a lot of combo potential, but man, it does. Like you could use this for a mad scientist or like an experiment, tortured experiment kind of loadout. Like there's, there's more potential here than I think a lot of people would assume upon first glance. Another thing is the paint region I've noticed is going to paint the bandage. Cause you see right here, it's blue and over here, well, it's just normal tan. So I believe that there is the paint region. Now, of course it is also combined with a misc, which is the main cast. But before we even get into that, I gotta say, very nice promotional poster here. Whoever did that, I'm a sucker for promotional posters. I wish like there could be like an art book or like a collection of all of these different posters. Cause I don't know, man. I just, I really like the art on these things. Like, I wish someone would just assemble them and like, you know, like a big binder or something so I could admire them all. Tangent aside though, the main cast, very nice misc cosmetics. It's gonna give him bandages on his arms, on his leg, and then a cast on his foot. It's also gonna add a little blood bag uh, to his little medic pack, which is actually really cool. It does have some different styles, which is going to add and remove various things. So you can see there's one with the blood stains and the little blood packet that it removes those. And then it also can remove the cast in case you want to use this with like boot cosmetics or something like that. I like that they give you the options. It's always good to keep your options open. And again, the amount of combos you could do with this I think would surprise you. Like the fact that the blood bag is paintable is very cool. You can use this in like some mad scientist kind of loadouts with the Emerald Gerardi, which is like one of the most useless cosmetics ever. Like retroactively giving that something to tie into is pretty cool. Using it in a soldier kind of loadout is very cool. This would make a lot of sense for a Halloween medic cosmetic set, dude. I think this came out really well. Next up here, we have the quick draw kid, which is going to be another all class hat. It is gonna give every single class a cowboy hat and a custom badge. All of these have their class emblems on it, which is such a nice attention to detail. I really appreciate that. Like, I feel like most people would just stick a TF2 logo on there and call it a day, but giving each class their own emblem, that's so much cooler, man. I really appreciate that, that detail. And the loadouts you can do with this, I mean, there are some classes that have a lot of cowboy themed cosmetics, and there are some classes that don't really have that kind of thing, but it's gonna open up a lot of different options, and I think it would be so fun to make loadouts with. I also like that it has a no badge style, so you can wear it with like the Wild West waistcoat, which, as a Wild West waistcoat user, 
I appreciate that, man. That is cool. The paint region is going to paint the hat. Perfect paint region. I would rather it paint the hat instead of the badge. And plus, it's going to let it combo into like some of Spy's darker uh, Western themed cosmetics. Like the combo potential for this thing is going to be so fun to mess with, dude. I really like this hat. Again, it feels like the quintessential all class hat to me. Every single class is going to get some value out of this thing and it's going to look good on all of the classes. This is going to be something that like you can spend ages making loadouts with and you're just going to find different combos and it's going to be a really fun time. Now we're going to be checking out the sixth sense unusual effect. This is going to have two different color variants. It's got the team colored version, the red and the blue, and then it also has a purple version. Now, can I say the sprite for this little wavy part is right on the nose. It is nailed, dude. It looks so good in my opinion. Now, obviously this is a Spider-Man reference, but that being said, it still makes a lot of sense as an unusual effect and it, it thematically makes a lot of sense in my opinion. Like it is just a cool idea. That subtle soft glow as well to kind of tie uh, the wavy particle in as well. It just ties together really well. I think it looks really good. It's unique from anything we currently have in the game. I like this one a lot, dude. And it does have a couple of wards on it. Dare I say it's still underrated. Like this, this kills it, dude. This looks really good. Though that is going to bring us to the end of the grand finale Scream Fortress 2023 Workshop Showcase. Now we have nothing left to do other than to sit back and wait for that fateful update. I cannot wait to see what gets in, man. This has been a lot of fun to film. I love doing these videos every season. Please go down in the description, vote yes, favorite your favorite items that I have featured in this video. Give them some awards if you're so inclined. This series is about supporting the workshopper, so please take a couple minutes and vote for some items. That being said, my voice is absolutely dead, but it was worth it, man. I always look forward to doing these videos. They are a blast for me to film. And with that, I will see you in Scream Fortress 2023.